welcome back so the next topic is a uh, interesting topic on blockchain technology which we have our speaker professor bitange demo uh, mr demo is a professor of entrepreneurship at the university of nairobi's business school his research centers on the link between icts and small and medium enterprises with emphasis on how ict influence economic development in africa Professor Demo chaired the Kenya Distributed Ledgers and Artificial Intelligence Task Force that developed the country's roadmap for digital transformation. He is an advisor and a board member to several organizations, including Safaricom, which is one of the leading telecommunication company in Africa. He is also a member of OECD Expert Panel of for Blockchain, World Economic Forum Global Blockchain Council. which is part of the world economic forums global fourth industrial revolution councils besides being having a permanent secretary of kenya's ministry of information and communication where we was where he was credited with the facilitating many transformative ict projects he is a senior advisor to un's global pulse big data initiative and un cdf's better than cash alliance and unicef's innovation innovation council He is a open data, big data evangelist, and dedicated to simplification for visualization of data for ordinary citizens to consume. He writes two columns every week for Business Daily and Nation Online. I will not take much of the time, and now I hand over to our speaker, Professor Demo, to take us through the blockchain technology. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I would go right into my. a discussion this afternoon and um although i've said digitalization here it encompasses all those emerging technologies that we class by them under the fourth industrial revolution um digitalization is is actually very key uh for blockchain function and uh, is one of the most uh one of the most um, disruptive uh technology that we have seen um in most cases people don't know that it is responsible for the many business models that have uh it is now providing new uh revenue and value producing opportunities that did not exist before um if i can take a moment to explain to you what happened uh, uh, especially with micro and small enterprises in Kenya during the the covid at the midst of covid in in march last year uh, many of the uh, the women who sell vegetables on the street could not sell their produce and then from the university we decided we, we can help uh we trained many of them We use whatsapp uh take pictures of what they had and send it to their customers and actually people started ordering because even them they were locked at home the question they had is that how do we drop this uh supplies into the to the, to the customers so we took motor motor bike taxis trained them on how to use uh, google maps Uh, we actually completed a whole e-commerce platform for the very bottom of the pyramid we changed to their business model some of them now have left from the places they used to operate where they sat the whole day to sell their produce now they what they do they wake up in the morning uh, talk to their customers and send the motorbikes to deliver the vegetables completely Uh, creating a more productive lifestyle because they are able to sell more and be able to do a lot of work at home look after the children something they never used to do before so digitalization is disrupting uh changing business models giving us new uh revenue and value producing of things now first i want to take you through um the fourth industrial revolution many of you know that the first industrial revolution around 1700 uh was much around mechanization steam 
him uh, water power. And at that time, there wasn't much happening in Africa. Africa was going through slavery at the time. Then came the second industrial revolution when mass production and electricity came around. This time around in 1900, Africa was undergoing colonization by the country. So there isn't much Africa benefited from the second industrial revolution. And then came the third industrial revolution at the beginning um, in the mid 20th century. This is the time um, Africa was fighting the colonial governments to gain independence. And even here, not much happened, but as years went by, we eventually benefited towards the end uh, when we began to use mobile money, which has created a lot of uh, and also enabled us to be able to provide inclusive financial solutions. Now that from 2018, we have moved into the fourth industrial revolution, which is going to be intensified digitalization, the integration of value chain, uh, product design, new business models, more intensified innovation, which is going on innovation leadership, uh, risk tolerance. If you look at our history, uh, regulators did not tolerate risk proactiveness, innovate, innovativeness, um, and a better regular, regulatory mechanism. But what is going to define the fourth industrial revolution are these key technologies, uh, big data analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, machine learning. Uh, th these technologies have actually begun to take root. Uh, there are several products that are leveraging at intelligence. For example, fintechs in East Africa. Um, they are able to lend uh, to people who would never have been lent money by any bank simply by developing credit scores and understanding the customer much more deeper than the traditional bank would have done. So AI is helping to do that. We come to big, big data, it is helping with respect to making decisions that are based on evidence. Uh, even policymakers are doing leverage to this. Blockchain uh, used in conjunction with AI is disrupt, disrupting business models by dealing with the aspects of supply chain. What you are going to see in the next few years is that the micro, small, and medium enterprises are going to be fully disrupted to the extent that many of them end up becoming formal enterprises that can begin to grow because uh, the technology digitalization means that it's much easier for government to know and digitalize them. Machine learning, of course, uh, what comes from AI, from data, um, it is happening and we are seeing, uh, especially around natural language processing, which is very, uh, in the sense that now you can communicate um, much more clearly than previous. Of course, Internet of Things is also growing uh, in Africa throughout the continent, we are seeing a lot of deployment of internet in various places, uh, in healthcare, in education, in um, agriculture. Um, and of course, AI in agriculture, big data in agriculture is happening. But the big thing is blockchain, as you would see from my explanation. But before I get to explain that, um, we are in the period that virtually everybody has to reset. Um, and it's like a blessing in disguise that COVID came and it has 
forced everybody to do things differently. Um, if you look at virtually all the universities in Africa moved on to remote learning, um, we started work, remote work. Even socialization changed because we are now on Zoom, on, uh, on various platforms to do things that we never did before. Uh, shopping, as I explained earlier, even at the bottom of the pyramid, shopping changed. The worship has changed. People uh, now stay home to watch different sermons and other things. And even collaboration has changed in different ways. So what we say from this is that the, it is a watershed moment for digital transformation of business. The reason that business that is, this is not looking at taking advantage of the solutions that are coming as a result of, of COVID. And the rules of success, we simply must agree that they are changing and are ever more reliant on harnessing the power of the models to get new value and experience. Uh, there is no way you can compete in ways to come if you don't have data, if you don't understand the customer. If you don't understand the customer 360 degrees, what, what does the customer want? When does the customer want what they want? And how do they want the product that they want to buy? This is what uh, we are beginning to see on the ground, that we are leveraging technology to be able to understand the customer, to provide the customer what they want, change the business model, and they begin to succeed. There is no way, I mean, I am not a prophet or anything, but there is no way you can succeed in this time without leveraging data, without leveraging artificial intelligence, because um, I can show you, I have a friend whom we work very closely. I don't know whether you can see this book. Are, are you able to see? Are you able to see? Hello? Yes, we can, yes. Yes, um, everybody is looking to figure out how to compete in the age of AI. We cannot be left behind without even asking questions, what can we do with technology? So if you look at um, this graph, it's actually a theory by somebody called Roger. Um, he said, when a new technology comes or a new innovation comes, you find very few people who need to understand it or use it, mostly tech. And then they influence very few people with early adoption. Then you have the early majority. We went through the, these phases in the internet without actually thinking what we can make of the internet. But the Americans looked at it and said, we can develop search engines, we develop web browsers, and actually dominated. That's how Google, um, even the earlier one, the search engines and browsers, nobody actually thought that uh, uh, there could be business out of the internet. Most of us were just using. Then came mobility. Mobility, the Chinese got very angry with Americans and stopped them. So they began to develop their Baidu, they developed their, their Tencent. Uh, they also, they got into mobile platforms, social media platforms, uh, just as Americans. Even Europe did not see how to monetize mobility other than just uh, mobile calls and stuff. So we have gone through the entire space dominated by two countries. And we, because we, we didn't figure out how to leverage mobility other than what we use it for, the voice and other things. Um, but we did not benefit from that. Uh, like the Americans and the Chinese benefited. Now we are in, in another wave of innovation, which is blockchain. Of course, Americans went ahead uh, creating uh, like Bitcoin, which is a currency that is no that has no utility. 
And that gives us an opportunity to begin take advantage of this technology and to do something much bigger than the Americans can do. We are at a very early adopter. The, the techies have played with this. That's how they have come with this. And then the early adopters. We must get into this space now. Um, if you see the competition around central bank digital currency or a CBDC, um, America was cautious, Europe was cautious until China developed the uh, EU one and uh, moved into the space of currency, um, which is um, a digital currency that is owned by the state replacing the fiat currency. And also, the, they are also thinking about tokenizing some of the services and be able to benefit ahead of the Americans. So what the Americans did, they quickly started figuring out how do they get into the CPDC. Um, and some of you who follow this closely, you saw how they stopped Facebook from going ahead. Because if Facebook had gone ahead uh, with the, the currency they created, the currency they created, they would have actually yeah, they would have had the first move advantage completely blanketing the, the dollar. But if you look at the big banks in the US, like JP Morgan, they created a dollar denominated crypto, uh, meaning that they would take advantage of cryptography and uh, shorten the periods of payments and they create more productivity and then attract more platform. But what has grown so big and the people watching are many other currencies like um, Ethereum. You have, you have, I think we have almost 2,000 currencies. Some you do, you do not understand the utility. There, there is no utility. Now, if you look at Africa, for example, the Congo or Democratic Republic of Congo controls 90% of copper globally. Um, all we need to do is actually to organize copper by understanding how much reserves are there and, and get people to invest because it's an asset, there is a utility. That will be more powerful than the Bitcoin, which is now uh, approaching almost seven, seven trillion, I, I didn't check uh, last. Uh, and the, Africa begins to take advantage of the resources we have to be able uh, and organize those resources to raise money for development and uh, be able to move forward. This is if um, this, the Southern countries agree work together very closely and they develop cryptos which have clear utility. I was in Dubai when someone was presenting and said, oh, we have talked to the government of Botswana. We, we have developed a token based on the diamond reserves. And I said, how, how does someone give you uh, all, all their resources to work it out? This is an area where I pray that everybody understands because the, the Southern Hemisphere, there are much more resources to be able to create a proper utility and a, a crypto that would actually do better than the cryptos we have in the market today. So if you look at Africa and you are doing business, wherever you are in South Africa, Africa is connected better than some other continents. If you look at the terrestrial fiber, which is yellow, you can start your business in South Africa and deal in, 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 in West Africa because there is connectivity. Even though we say connectivity is at 40%, but you, in the urban area, it is much higher 
and that is the market you have to need. So Africa free trade area is going to move faster than it has than, than anything before, simply because of and I say this confidently because I've seen what mobile money has done. Um, we now deal uh, cross-border trade using local currency. Previously, we had to buy dollars in order to deal with cross-border trade. And this is what is going to get much faster integration in Africa, that if businesses don't understand quickly and uh, change their models and they begin to look at the whole continent instead of looking at a country, then they will be too late. Because uh, several, I know several organizations are trying to look at Africa as a whole. Of course, Central Africa and DRC, there was war. That's why you don't see the connectivity, but they have started to lay fiber optics throughout the, the country. And then in the next few, uh, two to three years, Africa will be fully connected either by terrestrial fiber, but also by 5G, which many telcos are trying to work. And once that happens, then deployment of blockchain-based tokens would make much more sense. In my estimation, the next five years, I don't think we would use fiat currency, even in Africa. If you look at Kenya, for example, 96% of the banking is done online. Um, you ask me when I last went to my bank, it's about three years ago, because we, we use uh, mobile money without thinking um, and with, with no need of going to the bank. Uh, so if you look at Nigeria's new bank, it has grown within three years to become a major bank. This is somebody who has who have understood the continent that there is connectivity. We look at Flutterwave, uh, it's now valued at one billion. This is a fintech started in Africa and moving across borders. Even where we used to say this is francophone or this is uh, um, uh, the, the, the Africa usually divided by who colonized you, um, but that is going because of these solutions that are coming and bringing the continent much closer, closer in integration. One of the things that you need to know um, is that the internet economy in Africa, actually last year it was 100, almost 120 billion. And this is by 2025, it will be 180 billion. And by 2050, it's gonna be approaching 1 trillion internet economy. The population continues to grow. Uh, this is not a problem because most parts of the world, the population is dropping. Africa's population is raising. What Africa needs is that they need to offer the best education to these people and that they would run the world because they, it, it is the number of people that have who can work. The average age is 19. If they get a good education, they will be able to do a lot of urbanization is now 45% and is growing by 2025. Infrastructure investment is going on. Uh, pro innovation regulations, most uh, countries now do that. But what is the number of talent? If you look at the, the entire Africa, we have more than almost 750 um, house, thousands of young people developing different uh, types of applications. Um, Already we are at 700,000. These numbers mean that it is possible for Africa to the other side and begin to be a formidable player globally because 
Previously, what was the problem was that there was no local talent, uh, but there is sufficient talent. Um, personally, with some others, we are working um, in collaboration with several universities to get another 200,000 um, with masters, PhD in analytics, data science, and artificial intelligence. If we continue like this by 2030, we we'll probably have 2 million um, in form of talent in Africa. That would push the continent beyond uh, the limits um, that we continue with. So, if you look right now at what is happening, is that Africa is growing at the rate of 4% Latin America. This is economic growth. You want to install. What is driving this growth are the efficiencies from IC. Um, the, the mobile money, the, a, a lot of activities in agriculture now have moved uh, into tech. Um, some of you who watched uh, CNN this morning, uh, Mahindra from uh, Mahindra, which is a tractor manufacturer in India. Um, he is doing so well in Africa, assembling these tractors. They are using IoT. They are using all the technologies that I mentioned earlier uh, and completely changing agriculture. Um, every estimation is that agricultural production in Africa um, is around $1 trillion. Uh, because of consumption, because of exports to Europe and others, the values at one trillion. We had seen a lot of young people moving from agriculture because there wasn't much, but productivity has improved, and we are beginning to see people moving into it because in the days to come, more billionaires will come from agriculture than any other industry, simply because Africa has. 60% of the global arable land. I think we need to put our act together and to say we want to feed the entire world um, or collaborate with people in research, especially in food production. And that would change completely over the continent and become a much more competitive part of the world. Now, I, I am showing this because I am part of it. World uh, Data Lab, uh, we created it about five years ago. It has, this is an engine that gives you virtually every information that you need. Uh, for example, we have given it to the banks to understand their customers, mostly understanding income and demographics. Uh, what are the incomes, male incomes, female incomes, where do they live? Um, what is the demographics of who have the money? This helps you to begin to understand. Remember I said earlier, you need to understand the customer 360 before you even go out to, to talk to them. Um, of course, um, a lot of countries are in zero, zero, and the $11, no, um, uh, uh, I mean, poor countries are, uh, are where the income is $5 per day, but most of of, uh, of the world actually is cheap uh, to higher incomes. There's another engine which, if I get time towards the end, which I would show you what has happened. Um, uh, globally, globally, we gather this data globally, we analyze it. Um, some of it you can find it for free, some of it you can, you can, you can, you can acquire and be able to make the right decision. But every indication, uh, if I was on a live feed, I would have shown you the impact of this from 2022 to 2025. We have done on that. This is, um, 
a few years ago, innovation wasn't a thing you can talk about in Africa. But from 2015, you can see the inflow of venture capital investment in Africa. It went all the way to two billion dollars 2019, then COVID came, it dropped to around 1.6. Now it is approaching, uh, it's going beyond 2 billion um, in terms of the interest in the innovations that are coming up from different hubs in Africa. This is actually very good um, in the sense that uh, we need also the local investors to begin to, to invest in the local talent to come up with this. Um, new apps. There are so many applications in agriculture, in health, in uh, financial services. Um, and we are continuing to see a lot more innovation than. Um, this is uh, the market, uh, the, the market in Africa today is 2.6 billion. Um, Africa still um, is a good investment and we need to have Africa free trade area for us to begin to take advantage of, of this mega. It is a huge market, a huge market, but they, everybody is trying to eye this market and be able to get something out of it. Um, what has happened? Is Finance is going to be much simpler. Remember I showed you uh, the blockchain. Um, you you would pay directly. You... All right. Yeah, this one, I I, I explained Before, that to you. Yes. Yeah, okay. this one. This one is that I, I am part of this group that produces this data all over the world. And I hope I want to finish quickly, then I can show you some of the details and how it can be used, uh, especially uh, now when we are talking about uh, this matching text. Uh, but I was also talking about the, the innovation in Africa. Previously, we didn't talk about it, but from 2015, uh, things have steadily changed. Um, there were no innovation hubs in Africa. But today you have more than 750 hubs. Uh, virtually every country has uh, hub, thousands of young people doing innovation, new applications. There was a dip in 2020 because of COVID, but that has begun to move up very rapidly. And we would see more um, venture capital investments uh, this, this year. Um, so I was also talking about the intra-Africa trade. Um, this is a combined GDP of and it has become easier to trade between countries. It's going to become even easier because uh, as I explained with the currencies using blockchain, it's going to be very, very easy. I know like, we have like four or five products which are being developed on blockchain to trade across border. This is very key because previously you couldn't trade because there were no, not sufficient dollars uh, or a country did not have enough exports to make payments. But it's very easy now to, to pay across the border and it's gonna be even much more simpler going forward. Then I said the role of fintechs, which are growing so fast. Uh, I talked about Flutterway from Nigeria. I talked about um, there is M-Pesa from Kenya, which are growing across. There are so many solutions on, on uh, payment. They have created much broader inclusivity, um, much more efficiency. Then they are enabling greater financial inclusivity, which I was talking about, impacting micro, small, and medium enterprise to create most of Africa's employment opportunity. If you read, for example, what EcoBank 
uh, from Nigeria has done. This is one of the largest banks in Africa. They have succeeded and we are beginning to see more and more uh, digital banks that are being created in the country. They're driving innovation, agility, and it is responsible for Africa to improve production. Basically, um, Africa is changing so rapidly, but not, not many people have seen it. Um, mitigating information friction in financial supply chains through use of AI, blockchain, so as I said earlier, that this emerging tech, um, said the main ones being AI, um, data analytics, blockchain, IoT, um, all these are being used to create the efficiency, which has translated to higher uh, economic uh, growth. Um, I wanted to show something at here that an increase of 10% in terms of uh, connectivity leads to 2.5% increase per capita. Average global is around 2% but Africa it grows faster because there, there are just too many inefficiencies. Um, so if, if I can now move to, to this what they have done in Africa trade, which I talked about, employment opportunities is making uh, productivity across Africa. Uh, and of course, uh, AI is being deployed in every part of Africa. Um, and I know that is what is creating the change that we have never had before. Um, and it, Good for the continent to trade with the other continents because it is making it easier to do business. Um, so the takeaways is that digital consumption growth is fueled by fast growing urban and mobile. Because um, Africa became mobile fast. You know? uh, they, we didn't need computers, but everything is on the mobile. Internet infrastructure investments are a part of other boosting. The tech ecosystem is driven by dynamic developer and the startup landscape. So the number of talent going up. Then pro-innovation regulation, um, it's uh, it is happening and uh, working very, very, very um, fine. One thing I want to add here, there are now collaborations um, Previously, it used to be US, Silicon Valley, Kenya, but what now you see is collaboration between Asia and Africa. Um, there are many collaborations between uh, Kenya and India, for example. Uh, Kenya and uh, Japan has come in very, very late, but they are into, into the space of blockchain. Crypto. Um, I have talked to like six or seven major companies from, from Japan, uh, but uh, much stronger relationship between um, Africa and uh, India. Um, India has been like developing software for many applications here, but now there are serious problems in several areas. Um, then we are seeing some countries like Singapore, um, which are also looking into this. Of course, China is looking into us very heavily, very heavily to do collaborations. Uh, they are looking at a very high level. We have begun to see like Ant is now in South Africa. Um, they want to come into Africa very heavy. Uh, so there is going to be a lot of competition in the days to come, as we intensify the infrastructure, we create a, a better environment for success. Uh, but simply, uh, my message is that the world has changed, the rules of success are changed, and uh, we need to take advantage of this space and uh, move the, the continent or the other places of the 
files to one. This is all I had. Thank you, Professor. That mm -hmm. was a wonderful insight on blockchain technology for with those great numbers where we can see Africa is significantly expanding. And it was really great to know that Africa is, still has about 60% of the urban land. Uh, I would like to take a few questions for you. Uh, due to shortage of time, I'll just quickly take a few questions. Uh, first, according to the Global Crypto Adoption Index, Tanzania and Kenya are in top 20. What's your comment on this? Yes, um, our uh, Kenya, for example, people have invested 2% uh, of the GDP in the crypto space. Um, and I say, either it's because there is lack of investments or investment opportunities, because our stock markets haven't been doing so well. Of course, anybody looking for investments, um, they move into that space. Even myself, I cautiously moved into it. Of course, you have to have very high risk tolerance because when I bought Ethereum, it was 400, it collapsed up to 100, but now it's gone beyond 3,000. But if you understand, you, you sell half of it, then the rest you lose, there is nothing you lose. And I think everybody must be thinking the same way I'm thinking now. Uh, and I think nobody has lost because those who bought the, the Bitcoin sold uh, half of it to cover. Uh, so whatever investment that is there, purely for getting. Thank you. Um, what, uh, what are the benefits? What will be the benefits we provided by this fourth industrial revolution to East African countries? I would say fourth industrial revolution was created for developing countries because what you see from, uh, I didn't get it enough time to say everything about blockchain. Uh, blockchain brings trust in some way. And uh, if you have a trust system uh, that I can trust something I'm buying, say from, from uh, Bangladesh that you can trust because the technology is built to be that way, then we are going to do much more trade than previous. Um, and the small deployments we have seen in blockchain, for example, we have a company called Twiga Food. Twiga got into the agricultural sector, streamlined the entire supply chain, removed the middlemen because you can now see what from blockchain you can understand what the farmer is producing, the quality they are producing, and you can market that in the market. They, have, they are the fastest growing company here. There are several other companies that are looking in that space. Uh, they are providing credit to farmers. This is the problems that we had before. How do we give credit to micro enterprises in order for them to prosper? Technology has enabled us that we can now give non-collateralized credit, and you trust that they would be able to respond. And that has worked. That's why startups like those ones are doing so well here. Okay, uh, looking at the time, I'll just take one last question for you. Uh, what strategies East African countries can do so to benefit from agricultural investment? I think it's collaboration. That's why I said, if you watch CNN today, um, and I think uh, uh, it was a good message in the sense that uh, the, the tractor manufacturing in India is doing so well in Africa because they have come with, not just as a tractor to do the farming, they are working with you, everything satellite data, everything IoT, so you are working collaboratively this is what I was saying about the collaboration between other countries. Unlike the American companies selling tractors and leaving you with this one uh, to decide what to do. So there, there is much greater productivity and I think it's going to 
to grow uh, to the extent that Africa can begin to play a major role in food production in this regard. Thank you, Professor. Um, I would now end the questions. We would respond to all the uh, viewers. We will send them the answers, taking your opinion. I would, uh, lastly, I would request you to open your uh, momento and present on screen to our viewers, please, if you can. Professor, in the last moment, we were able to deliver you. So. I got here last night. So. Uh, okay. Okay. This one. Thank you, thank you, Professor, so much. Thanks.